Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to uh, graph f of x equals negative sine of x divided by 2. Uh, so to go ahead and do a problem like this, um, the first thing that I need to go ahead and do is uh, kind of identify what are going to be my transformations. So to do that, I write out my transformation form, which is f of x equals a times sine of bx minus c plus d. All right. Now a, b, c, and d are all going to be our transformations for our graph. And so we want to make sure we understand what exactly are they going to do. Let me take a drink of coffee. OK. So uh, when graphing, there's a couple things that we want to make sure that we understand, at least the amplitude, which is the half distance between the max and the min points. We want to make sure we know what the period is, which is the distance that it takes for the graph to repeat itself. The x scale, uh, the distance between each of our important points of our graph. Our phase shift, which is going to be um, if we're going to be shifting the graph left or, left or right from our initial, um, initial phase. And then our vertical transformations, if we're going to be shifting the graph up or down. So to determine the amplitude, I'm just going to take the absolute value of a. To determine the period, I take 2 pi divided by b. To determine the x scale, I take my period divided by 4. To determine my phase shift, I take whatever's inside my um, function, or you know, take my function of, set it equal to 0, and solve. And my vertical transformation is d. Did I say that fast enough? Sorry about that. I'll try to slow down. But that was kind of the introductory stuff, um, you know, stuff that I already have videos that I go very slow on. Um, but I've also gone over it so many times making all these videos. Uh, so anyways, let's go ahead and determine. Well, our a, you can see, is absolute value of negative 1, which is just 1. But something that's very, very important, um, because I didn't talk about a, yes, gives us our amplitude. But A also determines if we have a reflection over the uh, x-axis. So I'm going to write that in there. So any time I'm taking the absolute value of a negative number, I now know that I have a reflection. So I write it over, reflection over the x-axis. Sweet. My period is 2 pi divided by b. So in this case, I have 2 pi divided by, and you can say, well, there's no b, right? I'm not multiplying um, by any number. I'm dividing by a number, right? Well, really, you're, you can say you're mul being multiplied by 1, and that 1 is being divided by 2. So basically, you have 2 pi divided by 1 half. Well, now to simplify to solve this, I'll multiply by the reciprocal, which is 2 over 1 on the top and the bottom. And basically, what I have is 4 pi. Okay, So my period is going to be 4 pi. So rather than the parent graph where I have it takes the distance of only 2 pi to repeat itself, now it's going to take the distance of 4 pi to repeat itself. To take my x scale, I just take 4 pi divided by 4, and that just leaves me with pi. And then my phase shift, um, I'm just going to take whatever's inside my function and then set it equal to 0. So I'll multiply by 2 on both sides, and therefore I get x equals 0. So therefore, I'm not going to shift left and right. And a lot of times, I like to start at my phase shift. So since I'm starting at my phase shift, I'm going to say start at 0. And my vertical transformation is d, which would be adding or subtracting, which I'm not doing. So that is none. OK, so let's go and graph uh, sine of x. Um, when graphing sine of x, let's do a positive and a negative. That sounds like fun. And the reason I'm going to do a positive and negative, because I like it when I don't have a phase shift. When I don't have a phase shift, I know that the initial period that I'm used to graphing for the parent function of, of sine, which is just f of x equals sine of x, which everybody should know what that graph looks like. Starts at 0, goes up to the maximum, looks like that. That's your parent graph, right? We're now applying all these transformations. Um, and the first thing we're looking at is, is the phase shift. If that shifts left to right, you literally just take that graph and shift it left to right. But since I don't have a phase shift, my graph is going to kind of look like that, where I can say, all right, at 0, I know it's going to cross the x-axis. Now where it starts getting dif dif different is by the x scale, where the parent graph had an x scale of pi halves. Now I have an x scale of pi. So the next important point is pi. Then I have 2 pi, 3 pi, and 4 pi. I can also go in the negative direction, negative pi, negative 2 pi, negative 3 pi, negative 4 pi. So now, ladies and gentlemen, what you see is, is I can go in both directions. I could go two in one direction or two periods in the left direction. I always like to usually at least go two periods, though. Now, I'm going to go to the right period, because that's at least the one that we are familiar with as far as our initial period for the sine function. So remember I said, I know what the initial period starts at 0. Then the next important point is going to be to its maximum, right? But we got to remember there is a reflection over the x-axis, 
as well as our amplitude is 1. So I got to make sure I write in the amplitude. And that's going to be where our maximum or our minimum are going to be. Let's put it like right there. All right, now remember, first of all, on the initial graph, without a reflection, I would go up to the maximum, right? It would look something like this. But remember, now we're taking this and we're reflecting it over. So instead of going up to the max, I'm now going to go to the min. And then I go back to the intercept. And then usually, actually, I used to dot this in, right? It'd go down and then back up. Well, now, instead of going to the min, it's going to go to the max and back up. So therefore, you guys can see, I graphed kind of the initial, um, what their initial graph would look, and then I reflected it. Then just continuing on to the pattern, I'm going to go to the max, intercept, min, intercept. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph the sine graph with a reflection and change in period. Thanks.